with me is Chris Etherington, taking a look at the Farmers Insurance Open this week. Uh, how's it going, Chris? It's been pretty good. Um, you know, just got home from work and just had a nice relaxing uh, evening. Um, and I'm ready to uh, dive in into the uh, tournament for this week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're a couple tournaments in here to the PGA season. And, you know, Farmers Insurance Open, we got a, a big kind of a big storyline coming up this week with Tiger Woods. Um, yep. You know, I know I know you're a big Tiger fan, so obviously you got to be oh, looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, I was uh, I was very happy to hear uh, Tiger's uh, schedule for the next uh, five weeks. So this is his first week out of the five, and um, I was very happy how he played at the Euro uh, last month. Um, so I mean. I'm going to be playing him no matter what. Um, he his odds were 30, 33 to one at the beginning of the week. Um, I put five bucks on that just because I think he's going to do well. And um, yeah, there's really nothing else I can say about Tiger. He's just uh, getting the ball rolling for this new season. And as he said in in his press conference, um, he's get, Looking forward to the Masters, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I am too. I mean, always a big fan of watching him play. Uh, as far as this week goes, uh, you know, Farmers Insurance Open. What are you looking at as far as kind of the key stats to kind of how you kicked off your research this week? Yeah, for me, um, the stats that I look at to help me identify the basically the core players that I have for the week. Um, I like to look at the course history um also the recent form and as well as uh the greens and regulation um the other stats that i do look at as well um especially for this type of course would be uh probably uh strokes uh strokes gain uh, approach to the green um i figure the guys need to hit it pretty accurately on at short times. So if they can do that, they can also hit the greens as well. Um, the other stat is obviously 30 or better percentage and par five scoring. Uh, mm -hmm. You also with the north and south course both having um, four par fives on each. Um, I think that's a vital stat to look at this week. Yeah, certainly. I mean, as far as lineup construction goes, um, are you kind of more playing it a little bit balanced, stars and scrubs? How, how are you kind of looking at the approach this week? Um, when I when I first started playing, I I was probably more uh, probably stars and scrubs, but then as I learned, I think um, more balance is the way to go. Uh, I usually like to pick. The, the one guy at the top who I think will basically win or at least do well to finish inside the top five. Um, and then from there, I'll pick one, maybe two guys below 7,000. And then I'll pick the rest in between. And that's usually how I like to pick uh, my golfers. Okay. Yeah, definitely good to know. Um, does that kind of it obviously varies throughout each tournament, um, and that's kind of how you're going with this week. Yeah, with uh, a full field event like this, um, I, I think balance is the way to go. Uh, just because there's a lot of guys in that seven, eight range that can really do well at, at this event. Um, for those tournaments that are no cuts or very limited field. Um, then that's when you have to go a little stars and scrubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll jump in right into some picks here. Uh, and, and looking at kind of the tier one guys, um, you break it off as, you know, 9K and higher. Mm -hmm. um, who, who are you looking at as far as kind of your top top option all around here? Um, my top guy for the week would have to be uh, Justin Johnson. Um, overall, um, for his recent form, he probably has the best of the top guys. Um, and for course history, uh, 
he's he's really good as well. Um, I think he only yeah he had, he missed two cuts in the last uh, six appearances. Um, last year he finished 18th. So and last year he really improved on his uh, rich, rich play. So um, I think. And the top tier, Dustin Johnson might be my guy. Um, the next guy to look at would probably be um, yeah, uh, Jason Day, right at the top. Um, I think those two will be the, probably the most popular picks. Um, I'm not too sure how to feel about Matsuyama. Um, I think a lot of people are going to still pick him because of how he played towards the end of last year. Um, and other than that, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think Snicker and Walker are going to be pretty popular. Uh, Walker had that flu bug in, at the Sony Open, so I'm not sure what his uh, health is, but um, I think people are still going to play him. People are, people are going to play Seneca because of what he did last year for uh, winning. Um, and then, yeah, you got Louie. You, you never know what's up with Louie, whether he's healthy or not. Um, there's, there's a funny joke with, with him that uh, he brings a, his special mattress with him right whenever he... Uh, goes to, to a tournament. So <laughs> if he doesn't have that mattress, he doesn't play well apparently. I am I don't know if that's true, but uh, apparently that's what it is. Um and then with the little hand you got John Rom. He he played decent last week. Um I don't mind playing him a little bit, but with uh, the guys below, below him I, I kind of like a little bit better, so I think I'm going to wait for John Rom for the next few tournaments after this one, and then I'll go back on to him. I mean, other than that, I mean, I think those are guys that I'll be looking at key in on this week. Um, I, I like Dan Johnson as well as kind of the pay-up options, and, yeah. you know, you, you got to keep an eye on Louis Mattress. If we can get some insider info there, then, you know, that could give you a, a hot exactly. tip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, is there anyone that you're really just completely off of in that group that you're really not looking to play at all? Um, the two guys for me would probably be Phil Mickelson and uh, Paul Casey. Um, Paul Casey has he seems a little off, especially with his putting. Um, I he was my one and done pick for the first week. Um, for the uh, Sony Open, and uh, he missed the cut. He kept missing uh, three to five quarters, like there was no tomorrow. Um, it was just brutal to watch. And then Phil, he, although he did play very well last week, um, I I just don't know what to make of him. Every time I pick him, he seems to uh, miss the cut, and every time I when I don't you know, could 10 or at least play well. So I'm, I really don't know what to do with him. But uh, I think those are my two guys that I'm for sure uh, fading for the week. Yeah, Mickelson's price seems to a little be up there for my comfort level as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, at 10K, it's kind of like do you want to play him and hope that he finish inside the top five and – that's pretty much the only way for him to keep his uh, value. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then kind of moving into this middle tier here, you know, this is kind of where you're, you're, you're building your lineup at. I mean, we have Tiger Woods there, 7,900, but I mean, mm -hmm. there seems to be a ton of options in this range. Yeah. Um, I, probably my number one guy would have to be uh, Berger. Um, his, Reason regulation stat is really good. He's been hitting his screens um, about almost 80% of the time when he's teeing up recently. Um, 
and he, I believe he played here. Yeah, he played here twice. He missed a cut last year, but he finished 24th in 2015. Um, but if you look at his recent form, I mean, a uh, 45th at the Sony, 14th at the uh, Tournament of Champions, and then he was overseas for the uh, HSB Champions. Um, he finished second at that tournament. So, I mean, the guy is on form. And with his um, accuracy, I, I kind of like like Berger this week. Yeah, really good price tag on him in, in that middle range. And, and as you said, the form is, is really well. Um, kind of who else are you looking at? I know, you know, in your article, you talked about Brendan Steele at 8K. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brendan Steele, um, again, same with Berger and then Springs. Um, he's been rock solid. Um, literally, TD Green wise, um, he was up. He was uh, up there for a while um, at last week's tournament, um, and he basically has played here um, since 2011. Uh, he only missed one cut, and each time that he's teed it up, he's finished basically inside the top top 50. Um, there's really nothing you can say bad about Brendan Steele. And for my one gun picks, um, he was on my short list for the, for this week. So I'm still, uh, basically trying to decide on who to pick for the one and done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Steele's, I mean, Steele's a guy who I think is going to be, I mean, ownership wise, where, where do you kind of see him being at this week a little bit? On the sneaky side, or uh, I, I think he's going to be between. Uh, oh, yeah, I think he's going to be between fifteen to twenty percent. Um, I think with his recent form, he back-to-back top tens, uh, including last week, and people saw him play well on Sunday, and then with his uh, only one missed cut at this tournament. And only eight thousand. Um, he well, he's basically a steal at eight thousand, right? So just, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I think we're you. You look at the kind of that range, and in terms of a safety option, it seems like he's kind of best fit out of the guys that are are really around him. Yeah. Um, and I know a guy that has been kind of chalky to start the year here, uh, Charles Howell, for getting a guy who's below below 8K. Uh, I know you talked about him in your article. What do you like about him this week? Yeah, again, I mean, um, all the guys I picked are usually about the same type of player, basically. They, they hit their greens, and that's what you want at this course. And for when DraftKings released – their salaries for this week early. Um, Charles Howe was like the first guy I looked at. Um, I was really shocked that they put him at 7,300. Um, I would have imagined him to be upwards in the 8,000 range, maybe 8,500 around there. Um, just the way he's been playing recently um, with his course history. I mean, if you look at his course history, I think it goes back to 2003, 2004. Um, I don't know off my hand, but I'm pretty sure he hasn't missed a cut um, at all. So, I mean, the guy likes it here, obviously. And to be honest, it's, it's between Charles Howe and Brendan Steele for the, uh, the one you've done leave that I'm in. And I'm just going back and forth between those two. Yeah, how's the guy, I, you know, I'm building lamps throughout this week and it's just like, he always finds his way in because of that price tag, as you mentioned, it's just far lower than what you expect and what I expected. Um, as far as that middle tier, I mean, are, are there any kind of GPP guys that you might be looking at, some dark horses? Um, I mean, there, there is uh, obviously 
last week's winner is Swafford at 7,500. Um, I think I'm going to fade him uh, this week. I, I a lot of people are going to pick him, and just and he's been playing well. He hasn't missed a cut in like I think 19, 20 tournaments in a row. But uh, it's just one of those weeks where it, he's going to miss a cut at some point. It's just a matter of when now, especially after a win, his first uh, win on the tour. So that's the guy I'm going to be, be fading. Um, the one guy for uh, GBP wise, I I kind of like both uh, Tony Finau and uh, Jonathan Vegas. Um, he now is been hitting his irons, you know, lights out basically recently. He's hanging tons of greens. Um, and he has played here a couple times, uh, 18th or 24th, what, last two years. So that's pretty decent history. Right, right there. Um, and then for Vegas, uh, just Pulling up here, uh, yeah. I mean, he, Vegas has been playing here since 2011. Um, again, another guy with only one, one missed cut at this tournament. A um, couple of top 20s last two years, and the guy is uh, very consistent. I watched him play at the uh, yeah at, at the uh, Canadian Open. Um, last year, I was there for the final day, and he he's a very solid uh, ball striker. He doesn't really have a loose one off the tee. He hits his sirens very well, and uh, when his putter gets hot, I mean, it, it's very likely that he'll contend. Um, more than likely to finish in the top in the top 10, maybe, in, maybe uh, in the top five, and that's uh, really good value for a guy, guy that's at 7,500. Yeah, definitely a lot of upside for that price tag. Um, looking at guys kind of below 7K, you know, we got quite a few options. Um, I mean, who are probably two of your favorite values this week? Um, the one guy that I like, um, who I went to last week, who played well um, is Henrik Norlander. Um, he's been pretty consistent recently. And I just like the fact that, well, for one, he's played his tournament at least twice, and which is good. So he knows the uh, terrain a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, his last couple tournaments, um, he's been very solid. 50th. Uh, Last week, the 20th um, in the Sony Open, and he was second at the RSN Classic. So I think at 6,800, um, he's going to be overlooked. Uh, the one guy in here that everyone is going to be on this week is going to be Martin Leonard. Um, he has decent course history, and he has been playing well recently, but for this volunteer for a guy that's going to be probably, I would say around 20% of home for the week. I would pick other guys around him elsewhere just to uh, have any, a unique uh, lineup. So, so I'll be thanking him. Uh, the other guy that I like he's uh I think he's cheap. Uh I believe it's Adam Hadwin. I believe he's had sixty two, if I'm not mistaken. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, he's had sixty two. Um obviously with a close win uh last week. Uh he's played here uh a few times. Uh Made the cut back to back uh, years, uh, 2016, 2015. And um, yeah, with his uh, recent form and a fellow Canadian, um, 
I just kind of have to uh, go with Hadwin again. Uh, the guy is on form. Only won this cut in the last six weeks or so. So I think those are the two guys that I like. It's uh, Hadwin and uh, Norlander. Yeah, those two guys, I mean, if you pair one of them with Hal, it, you know, that opens up just a ton of salary for the rest of your golfers there. Yeah, if you do that, you could probably fit uh, Justin Johnson and maybe a, maybe a Jason Day if, you're, if you want to go another scrub somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, that's going to wrap it up for your picks. I mean, who are you looking to kind of win this week as far as the top guy or do you have like a, a dark horse that could come in and win the whole thing? Uh, for the top guy, I think I think there's one guy that might do it. Oh man! Sorry, put put you on the spot here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wanted to say DJ because I'm I'm taking him um, as my one of my core players for, for the league. Uh, yeah, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to stick to my gut. Uh, Dustin Johnson will be my winner at the top. And then uh, for my dark horse guy, uh, uh, I would love to see Norlander play well, but I think he'll make the cut at least, and that's all I want from him. Well, you know what? Maybe Luke Bliss. I think Luke Bliss might be the the dark horse type of player. Everyone was basically on him last week, and he played okay. Um, he was at 13th at the Sony and 13th at the RSN Classic. Um, his par five scoring is really good, and He's been uh, hanging it well with his irons. So I think that's going to be my uh, dark horse. It's uh, Luke Liss. All right. You heard it here. Dustin Johnson, top guy. Luke Liss, a possible dark horse. Uh, be sure to check out Chris's article. I uh, wrote up his favorite plays. It's up on the site. Uh, and also be, check, be sure to check out our Daily Fantasy Cafe Optimizer as well.